What's up, everybody? Welcome to Heresy Financial. My name is Joe Brown, and today we are going to be looking at gold, uh, silver, and the miners. We're going to be asking the question, trying to answer it, has the bear market ended? Is the consolidation that gold has been in for the last six months? Silver, not so much, not as severe of a down uh, move as gold, simply because the last couple of months, silver has been very very much so outperforming gold and uh, breaking out now. And so we're going to be looking at uh, a couple of things that will help us try and answer the question whether this is the bottom and it's just, you know, we're going to start, you know, seeing more and more uh, uh, uptrends reestablished from here. And uh, we're going to be looking at the uh, charts. We're going to be looking at interest rates and inflation expectations. Uh, we're going to be looking at supply issues. And then finally, we're going to be looking at the impact of energy costs on the price of uh, precious metals and then miners. Ready? Let's dive in. All right, so first we're going to look at a, uh, a few charts here and uh, we're gonna start with gold, then we'll move to silver, then we're gonna move to the miners just to give a little bit of a uh, uh, long-term perspective on what has been going on here with the price uh, because uh, it, quite frankly, it seems like the sentiment right now, if we look at the sentiment on precious metals, gold in particular, is a lot more bearish than the price action would actually suggest. So let's take a look here at the, uh, the price of gold really since uh, about the last year, since about April of, uh, of last year here. We can see here that we're, we're still clearly above uh, anywhere near the, the, where the price was uh, prior, to, uh, prior to halfway through June of last year. And uh, we've been consolidating here. So there were, there were a couple of, uh, couple of weeks where uh, we had much higher prices, but really we've spent a lot of time consolidating, gold has been consolidating in between 1800 and uh, just over 1900. It's spent a lot of time in that range here. And it's broken down a couple of times. It broke down in uh, late November and then broke down uh, within the last uh, week or so below 1800. Now we could see further uh, further down moves if we do. It looks like somewhere around 1680 will probably would probably be like the next uh, kind of bottom. Uh, but since we've broken down past 1800 a couple of times and popped right back up, especially today, you know, today gold was up 1.37% to get back above 1800. Looks like that might be an area where uh, all of the demand comes in and matches or uh, takes over uh, any of the sellers there. So we'll see here, we've been consolidating and what you tend to find here, you see the, the top part of this uh, trend is uh, going further and further and further down. Whereas the bottom part of this trend is staying pretty steady. Let's say 1760 is the bottom here. We're not seeing lower lows there. We're seeing uh, rebounding off the lows. And so that's when you see kind of a coiling effect where uh, the energy is building because uh, buyers come in, buy at 1760, let's say, and, and 1800 as well. Sellers are coming down lower and lower. And so it's a matter of once it reaches, you know, uh, the, the point at which buyers and sellers are uh, kind of agreeing where that uh, those trend lines match, which way is it going to explode? Now, fundamental macro and environment factors uh, look like it will explode to the upside in my opinion, but we're at, least, at this point, we're just uh, still looking at the charts. Long term here though, I want to point this out because this is important. We broke above 2000, um, you know, right when we, we were uh, experiencing kind of the height of that uh, bull rally about seven months ago. But if you take a look at where uh, uh, gold was throughout 2011, 12, uh, really during that time frame, for the last seven months, we've been establishing a high amount of gold volume above really what was really the highs during that point back in uh, back at the end of the last kind of uh, bull market there before the the you know multi year correction, and uh, so this eighteen hundred level is pretty strong for gold. Anytime we have dropped below that recently, we've popped right back above because that was some pretty strong resistance back in 2011 and 2012. And so uh, we've spent the last seven months establishing lots of volume above this floor, which was previously a ceiling. And so that looks really bullish to me, uh, especially given the fact that really from the, the end of 2015, all the way up to about six, seven months ago, there was a very strong bull market. And so having a very strong bull market breaking out to 
all-time highs and then consolidating and establishing a new high level of volume above prior resistance, that's an extremely bullish sign. And so you'd expect that now this floor holds and we continue to move up from here and extend that uh, you know multi-year rally here that we've been uh, experiencing in gold long term. Moving on to silver, uh, again, for the last year or so, we can see that the correction recently hasn't been as severe. It was more volatile, right? It dropped a lot more during that drop in uh, late September, but uh, you can see that it's rebounded quite uh quite clearly here. And just today it was up 3%, which is significant because the $28 mark for silver, that was a pretty strong resistance point. And we broke above it a couple of weeks ago when there was the whole silver squeeze thing. And now we've broken back above it without as much hype, which is a big deal when you're making higher and higher moves without as much uh, media attention, without as much hype. That's a very strong bullish indicator. So if you remember when I talked about this happening, when you know everything with GameStop was happening, I, uh, I said, I think that this uh, will probably, this spike will probably not last very long. We'll probably have a, you know, a, a fall again and re, re kind of like retest this uh, trend, fall back down, consolidate, and then start a really, an actual healthy, strong rally following. And so it looks like that's what's happening here. Again, could be a little fake out, but it looks like uh, we've, uh, you know, a, a lot of the people, like the weak hands been shaken out. Um, a lot of the people who are going to sell have sold. And uh, despite all the, you know, paper selling that's been taking place, it looks like it's being met in force with, uh, with buyers. And so looks like we're on to uh, on to some, you know, some new highs here with silver, simply because it looks like we're, you know, having a strong breakout here. So again, time will tell, but that's what the charts kind of look like so far. Um, and then look, looking back at this long term here, you can see that the long term chart obviously doesn't look like the gold chart does. We've had many highs in the past with silver and the Hunt brothers try to corner the market and all that. And so uh, we can see here back in 2011, it peaked all the way up at $50. And so during the period of 2011, 2012, uh, it was consolidating in between 20 six and 35 ish. And so the fact that we have been uh, recently holding above 26 means that uh, as long as we do that, we've got, you know, historical precedents. We're not making new highs. We're not filling a vacuum of volume here. We could very easily see a move up to 35 next uh, with this uh, with this silver move, especially with us breaking out of the more recent uh, the more recent highs here. All right, moving on to the gold miners index. Gold miners were up uh, four and a half percent today. The GDX was up four and a half percent, and so obviously that's more than gold. That's what miners do. They're a leveraged move of the uh, underlying asset that they mine, right? Because if uh, if you know gold goes up in price, then that directly impacts their bottom line. And so gold miners experiencing uh, a, a a decent move up today, still well within their downtrend channel. Although I'm not as confident in uh, the uh, uh, the strength of technical analysis on something like GDX, because number one, made up of a bunch of other stocks that aren't necessarily as tightly correlated as something like the S&P 500. But number two, it's directly impacted by the actual price of gold. And so uh, being a derivative, its price is more or less derived by something else. Uh, you're going to see uh, more of that. You're going to see some beta slippage taking place in, uh, in in an index like this. And so uh, where we do see some lower lows here, a lot of that is being driven by the fact of uh, a downtrending uh, underlying asset mixed with volatility. And so I'm not as uh, focused on the technical analysis, but we do see it was a solid move and uh, it, there's nothing in this that indicates um, you, you know, something where I'd be scared of a uh, drastic decline, especially if we look long term here. Uh, again, similar to gold, although, you know, uh, not as, uh, you know, it's got that beta slippage effect on it. Um, we do see this, you know, really great consolidation and maybe we see a room, you know, room for a gap down just on a technical basis down to around 30, uh, 32, 30, somewhere in there. But uh, ultimately a, uh, a move up in gold, you know, by 100, 200, 300 dollars an ounce could easily take this thing to, to 45, 50, 55. So much more leveraged effect there on its price versus what uh, what 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 gold itself is doing.
Similarly, if we look at the juniors, they had a fantastic day today, 5.8%. And uh, same type of thing here looks like from a technical perspective, they held up support a little bit better here down at the bottom over the last couple of days. And uh, long term, you can see that that uh, that really coincides with some long term resistance here. And so uh, the, the support for the junior seems a lot stronger from a technical perspective. And so, again, a, a, a renewed rally in the price of gold could send this uh, the, the juniors index up even uh, you know, faster with more fierce uh, you know, upward movements than uh, something like GDX. And so. Very bullish on this as well. Now, if we move over to SIL, it's a uh, silver miners index. We can see that uh, they had an even better day today, 6.5%, which makes sense, right? Silver was up more than gold, and so the silver miners. And you can see here that they have not recovered as well as the price of silver has. You can see that uh, they've, uh, they after the initial drop in September, really been consolidating in between this, uh, you know, 45 and 40 mark here. And it has not recovered up to uh, up to the same level that silver has, which again, makes sense. There's that leverage factor that keeps it suppressed in volatility and keeps it moving down uh, in a uh, in, in, in a volatile movement of the underlying, you're going to see that beta slippage again. So uh, we're, we're seeing that here. But on the up moves, again, that's going to be a lot stronger. And so especially with um, the longer term outlook here, you can see that uh, we're uh, right in this range. There's a lot of uh, historical volume here. We're right at a, re at a historical support resistance line here. And so we could encounter a little bit more resistance at 52 and then uh, kind of smooth sailing after that if the silver price really takes off. Same thing for the miners, although the mi uh, the miners, the, I'm sorry, the juniors have recovered a lot better uh, here. And so you see this with SILJ, likely some of that could just be to money pouring into SILJ at, in order to achieve, you know, higher returns. And uh, it was up uh, over 8%, 8.22% just today. And so we can see here that uh, there's, you know, money pouring in and as more money pours in, it attracts more attention, positive feedback loop here. Long term, you can see that uh, we're, uh, you know, not as much history here to look at, but this $14 level was historic uh, resistance that was, you know, tested and uh, became solid support recently here. So a move up to 20 and then clear sailing from there uh, is something that uh, an up move in the price of silver to $30, $35 could definitely do very easy here. So massive leverage returns on these miners are uh, at some point coming. And in my opinion, it's inevitable. Obviously, anything could happen. I'm just a guy on YouTube, so take it for what it's worth. But uh, in my opinion, it's a matter of when these moves start to happen, not if these moves start to happen. And simply, that's because of the fundamental driving factors, not the charts. Uh, one of the biggest ones is rates. And I've talked about this at length. Essentially, interest rates are what are driving precious metals, especially gold right now. And uh, that's because uh, uh, it, when, when cash is a negative carry currency, that makes something that doesn't pay interest positive in relation to something that's costing you money. And so as uh, interest rates historically over the last year, two years have been really negative, that has been very good for gold. However, long-term interest rates especially have been spiking recently due to inflation expectations. We've seen interest rates, the yield curve has steepened. So the Fed keeps short-term interest rates low, but the other end of the yield curve, the long-term is starting to spike because the free market is looking and saying, we're expecting some more inflation here. So bonds have been selling off, which is pushing yields up. That's turned some yields actually positive now nominally they've always they've been positive for a long time but uh real yields when you uh, when you adjust nominal yields for inflation um then uh, you, you know they've been negative for a long time some of them are starting to turn positive now and so that's been a headwind for gold but as that happens our economy and our government is so over leveraged that it becomes impossible to get new debt with a low enough debt service cost in order to pay off the old debt and continue to fund future operations, especially for the government. So at some point here, I don't know where the line in the sand is, might be 2%, um, we might've already hit it, 
At some point, the Federal Reserve is going to have to step in and increase their bond buying because the free market's selling off those bonds, which is pushing interest rates up. So they need interest rates at the, you know, on the full yield curve to, to be lower so that the entire country, government and economy isn't insolvent. So they're going to start increasing their bond buying purchases. Once they do that, uh, rates go down, which means that real yields go uh, further down because inflation expectations aren't going to change. Inflation expectations are going to stay the same. And so as that happens, real yields go further down. That's rocket fuel for gold. And so that's kind of the tipping point for me. What I'm watching out for as soon as that happens, when the Fed starts increasing from 80 billion a month to 100 billion or 150 billion or whatever it is, when they start increasing their bond buying purchases, that pushes real yields back down. That's going to be what pushes uh, kind of this next uh, you know, explosive phase in, uh, in precious metals. Now, even without that, we've got supply issues, right? Everybody's talking about the supply issues. There's uh, issues with not being able to source enough metal deliveries are being delayed. And, uh, as prices are suppressed, which it looks like there's, you know, big shorts still in the market. So they continue to sell into the market, these paper, uh, paper, paper sales in order to keep, you know, dissuade buyers and keep the price low so that uh, their hope is that they can close out and not take as big of a loss. As that happens, that keeps the price down. That makes it easier for buyers who actually want to buy the physical to buy it and request delivery. And so the, the kind of the cure for low prices is the low prices, right? Because it makes it easier to buy it. It makes it easier to afford it. And so ultimately that's going to be what kind of someday, eventually, whenever it happens, breaks the paper markets and we'll see the uh, the price explode as the only people who were selling were the ones selling paper, not uh, not physical. And so then everybody who has physical doesn't want to sell anymore. And so that drives the price parabolic. And so with enough constraints on supplies, which we're seeing everywhere, that could be something that drives the price up even without uh, the Fed stepping in to buy uh, extra, uh, you know, increase their bond buying. And then finally, energy, uh, oil itself. What was oil up to today? Crude oil was up uh, almost 5% to 62 bucks a barrel today. And so uh, with uh, with oil uh, skyrocketing, that's energy costs going up. That makes it harder to, uh, you know, afford to mine stuff, right? Because energy costs are, you know, the costs of miners. And so that's going to make the, uh, the, the supply issues worse, right? Or at least it's going to drive the price up. Now that also for miners, that's a headwind, right? Because that's their costs going up. So that negative impacts their balance sheet, but normally their profits go up, at least in the short term, more than enough to compensate for the increase in energy costs. And so um, I'm still very bullish on miners, even though I'm also very bullish on energy, uh, you know, the cost of oil, um, especially over the next year. So uh, that's what it looks like to me here. So I'm not positive, you know, at this point, you know, I've sound, I'm sounding like a broken record for the past six to seven months, every time gold and silver go down, I'm talking about how they're, you know, potentially the bottom is in every time they go up. I'm asking, Hey, is this the start of the new rally? So we'll see there's from a technical standpoint, we do have still have room to the downside. We haven't sustained a breakout yet. That looks like, uh, you know, that that downtrend is over, but when you put everything together, I'm perfectly comfortable nibbling and, you know, quite honestly started to gobble up at this, these, at, at, the, at these points, because even if you were buying at 2000, you've dropped 200 bucks so far. And so the downside potential for me to start buying at these prices when we're, when we're lower here, by every the standards of everything else that we see going on, um, I'm very comfortable myself buying at these prices because the downside potential is a lot less than the upside potential, in my opinion. Not trading advice, do your own research, but uh, that's what it looks like to me. So uh, we'll see what happens. As always, I'll keep you up to date. I'll keep you informed. If you uh, want somewhere to start buying uh, gold and silver, I use one gold myself, especially for my auto investing and for the ease of storing it in other countries. And so uh, if you haven't opened an account with them, you can get $5 uh, free for uh, opening an account with them. Use my link in the description below. As always, I really appreciate you. Have a great day.